Hello everyone and welcome to a most interesting game that was played yesterday in the Cairns Cup in the St. Louis Chess Club. It's uh, Juven Jun Women's World Champion versus Karissa Ip. We've been following uh, games of Juven Jun during her uh, World Chess Championship match against Alexandra Goryachkina, which she eventually won. Uh, here uh, in round 8 she faces Karissa Yip. She is the youngest participant of the current Cup and uh, uh, she is the youngest woman ever to, the, to defeat a Grandmaster. She defeated Alexander Ivanov at the age of 10. So really, really impressive stuff and uh, well, it's also a very impressive game. So without further ado, uh, let's check it out. Uh, we have e4 by Ju and Jun and e5 by Yip. Uh, we have knight to f3, knight c6 and bishop to b5. Again, the Rui Lopez is on the board, a6. Uh, goes for Morphe's defense, bishop a4, and the now g6, uh, the, the Fianchetto defense. We have d, sorry, uh, we have d4, uh, e captures on d4, and now c3, offering yet another pawn, uh, which of course you can grab, but uh, it, can, it, it can get a bit messy. For example, captures, captures, and now if you want to continue developing uh, as you normally would, bishop g5 really... Uh, could create some problems for black if you don't want to play something like f6 which you usually don't uh, you don't want to go knight f6 because of e5 for example if you go knight here then knight d5 you pile up on the knight you threaten captures to win the piece so then a, a, a lot of things happen but in the end the white will always be better uh, but okay after c3 just continuing development bishop to g7 and now c captures on d4 just uh, grabbing back the pawn uh, we have b5 uh, pushing the bishop back, bishop to b3, and only now knight g to e7. Uh, we have d5 uh, by Ju Wenjun, knight to a5 going after the bishop, and now not bishop to c2, which seems like a reasonable move, but rather bishop to d2, putting uh, pressure on the knight, uh, forcing this trade. So, okay, uh, Yip uh, goes for it with knight captures on b3, queen captures on b3, and then now c5. A very nice expansion, you want to bring your bishop to b7, maybe c4 will be an idea in the future. And if you capture Ampasan, you don't really gain anything, you're just giving a more central pawn for, for a less central pawn, so not really uh, something to be gained here. So after c5, we have bishop to c3, now offering a trade of dark square bishops, which black can't really accept, because if captures, captures, then you have a nice double attack on the c5 pawn and the rook on h8. So here we have f6 blocking the attack this way uh, and now a3 uh, preventing b4. Uh, we have d6 uh, preparing to develop the light square bishop and now there is one game where knight bd2, well there are two games where knight bd2 was played and there is one game where queen to c2 was played but here we have h4 and it is a new move in the position. So already as of move 14 we have a completely new game. So let's see how the game continues. Uh, Carissa castles, we have castles, and now uh, if you continue with h5 to bust open the position, black will happily accept this, since your king is still in the center of the board, and uh, well, if rook captures then bishop g4, you might also bust open the white's king side, so white will not be any happier uh, about this th than black will. So knight b to d2, and now queen to e8. Uh, we have uh, castles by uh, by Ju Wenjun and now bishop to d7. Uh, continuing development, we have queen back to c2 and now rook to c8, putting the rook to, to the c file, which uh, occupies the same as the queen. Maybe b4 will be an idea in the future. We have b3, now making room for the bishop here, also maybe with ideas of advancing the pawn to, to a4. Uh, we have h6 and now a4. Uh, so, rook back to a8, uh, preparing for some, some trades along the a file. Captures, captures, we have captures, captures, uh, so everything gets traded off. And now, rook to a1, uh, grabbing hold of the a file. Queen b7, getting the queen out of the way, and the now queen to a2. Uh, also, an interesting uh, approach would be b4, where you're basically saying if you capture and captures, then you're left with a weak b and a weak uh, d pawn. So you're probably going to go for c4, and then rook to a5 is very strong, since uh, you cannot uh, kick it away with knight to c6, your dark square bishop will be unable to help out. And then now you're going to go queen a2, you're going to bring uh, the knight uh, the d4 to help out with an attack against the b5 pawn. Maybe this knight can also come and help out with the attack of the b5 pawn. So that's one way to go about it. Uh, Ju goes for queen to a2 instead. And okay, knight to c8. The knight can now come to b6. Uh, and knight to e1. Uh, we have b4 pushing the bishop back. Bishop back to b2. And then now bishop to b5. Grabbing hold of this very nice diagonal. Uh, we have knight to c2. 
Uh, and now the knight can come to e3, the knight can come to c4, where it will be very strong. And now bishop to d3, putting pressure on the knight and on the e4 pawn. So knight to e3 as planned, and now queen e7 with a double attack on the e4 pawn. And here, very interesting move by uh, by Ju and Jun. Uh, Queen to e, sorry, rook to e1, which basically says, okay, you can capture on e4, but if you capture on e4, then I'm gonna go knight to e4, uh, just uh, knight e to c4, open up uh, a double attack on your bishop here, and uh, uh, f5. Now, f3 is not possible here because of queen captures on h4 and uh, you attack the rook on e1 that's undefended, but still, white can go for captures, captures, and then knight captures on e4. After pawn captures, now you deliver check, King moves and now f3 uh, does not win the pawn back, but uh, for example after rook f4 now you can trade everything, captures, captures, and after captures, captures you can go queen to f6 uh, and now uh, you will, well, your, the g6 pawn is under uh, under pressure, the, knight, the pawn on d6 is under attack, and here uh, black will most likely trade queens, captures, captures, and now with the doubled pawns, even though you're up a pawn, king f2, you're very close here. Uh, you should you should hold this to a draw without a problem. So this is uh, uh, Juvenjun's plan uh, if bishop goes for uh, captures on e4, and this is of course with best play. However, uh, Carissa goes for knight to b6. Instead, there is always time to grab the pawn. Uh, we have queen back to a1. Uh, and now rook to a8. Uh, again, grabbing hold of the a file, queen back to c1, and uh, now h5, taking away the g4 square from white's knight. Uh, and uh, now uh, knight e to c4. Here, waiting with g3 uh, sh should have been played, uh, but instead we have knight e to c4, which uh, now, okay, you you're already defending this twice, but there's a problem. Uh, and uh, Carissa finds it. Knight captures on c4, knight captures on c4, and rook to a2. And here, uh, you will have you will have some problems uh, defending everything because the queen is now stuck guarding the bishop. If you move the queen, then just captures, remove the defender of the bishop, and you lose the you lose the bishop on b2. Uh, uh, it's not it's not a threat yet, but uh, you, you'll see what happens here. G3 was played, and now comes uh, king to h7, sort of improving the position of the king. Uh, but not really. Here it's it's very hard to find a good move uh, for black. So uh, feel free to pause the video here. Uh, sorry for white. Feel free to pause the video here and try to find a, a, a useful move for white while I give you a couple of seconds just to get a feel of the position. <clears throat> so uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on finding such a, such a beautiful defensive idea. It's really a disgusting engine line, so... Uh, no harm done if, if you didn't find anything, but rook to e3 is incredibly strong here because you attack the bishop and you're inviting bishop to h6, but that's the point of this line. Bishop to h6 now threatening to win material, f4, and only now bishop captures on b4, uh, bishop captures on e4, and now you play queen to b1, you, you go for a double attack, and then after bishop captures on b1, rook captures on e7 with check, king g8, you check, uh, bishop blocks, and now bishop, let's say, captures on f6, and, uh, well, uh, black is of course still better, but uh, white, white definitely got some play. Uh, and this is the best you can do here. Uh, however, uh, knight to d2 was played instead. It means that now the e4 pawn is nicely guarded, uh, but you're welcome to pause the video once again and now try to take advantage of this knight to d2 move uh, the, the best way you can. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, again, congratulations. It's still bishop to h6. Uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, there it is, bishop to h6. Uh, and now, what do you play here? Uh, okay, we have f4, makes sense, you want to block the attack, and now comes the move you had to find, queen to a7. Uh, lining up with the king, the threat is now just c4 check, followed by c3, winning the game. So you have to block this, knight to c4 is played, and now queen back to d7. Now the queen can come to g4 and put a lot of pressure on the king's side, and the white will have... Problems uh, trying to defend everything. Rook e3 now, okay, you're already guarding the g3 pawn, but now bishop captures on c4, b captures, and queen to g4. Uh, so already you have a threat of uh, bishop captures here, because the, the g pawn would be pinned. 
And uh, strongest here is rook d3, uh, which uh, now uh, defends the f4 pawn with, with the bishop, but then f5 is incredibly strong. Uh, e captures on f5, uh, and now bishop to g7. So with a double attack on the bishop, and if bishop captures on g7, now it's queen e2 with mate uh, mate to follow. So the, those are the, the poisons that lurk in the position. Of course, if queen f1, then queen h2 is mate. There's no, uh, there's no getting around that. So after queen to g4, already you see uh, there are problems here. You, should, you shouldn't really give up the e2 square. So king to h1 was played instead. Now, of course, the g-pawn isn't pinned, so the g-pawn will be able to capture the bishop. Uh, so now feel free to once again pause the video for the last time and find the, the winning idea for black while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on paying attention. It's still bishop captures on f4 uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show. Uh, point is that, okay, now you're either winning material and the game or g captures and then queen captures on h4. King to g1, now queen g4 check uh, and now king to h1. King f1 doesn't help, this comes with check, so it's pretty much the same idea. So king to h1 was played, and now queen captures on f4. Now there's the simple thread of rook captures here, queen captures, and queen captures rook, uh, which uh, basically trades down into a winning queen and pawn endgame. And also there's this rook to b3 move, which pretty much seems to guard everything, but not really. Queen captures, bishop captures, and the rook a1 will now pick up the bishop and again trade down into a winning rook and pawn endgame because you don't have rook c3 uh, due to the b4 pawn guarding the c3 square. So after queen captures on f4, uh, uh, Ju Wenjun tried queen to b1 to force this, but it's not, uh, well, you, you don't have anything better. Rook captures was played, queen captures, queen captures on e3, and queen captures on f6. So now you're only up two pawns, but in a queen and pawn endgame, that's that's a lot. Queen captures on e4 with check already. Uh, you are now, uh, well, you are now up three pawns, uh, king h2, and now b3. You start pushing the b pawn. Uh, the b1 square is already covered, so that, that's also a plus. Queen to f7 check. Now, of course, uh, Ju Jun's only hope is to create some sort of a perpetual, and she will do her best to, to try and do that. Queen f8 check, king g5, queen uh, to d8 with check, king to f5, queen d7 check, king e5, slowly but surely uh, remaneuvering the king. Queen g7 check, king f4, we have queen to f6 check, and now king to g4. We have queen to e6 with check, and now king, uh, sorry, queen blocks with f5, and only now queen captures on d6. But now uh, it's uh, it, it's a very simple maneuver how to force a winning endgame here, uh, just uh, queen to f2 check. King h1, now of course queen f3 check, king h2, and now queen to h3 check. This is how you force a queen trade. King g1 and queen to g3 check, and it was in this position that the Ju Wenjun resigned the game as uh, there is nothing more to be done here. What follows is that you either lose the queen or you trade queens, captures, captures, and then it's a race, but a race that white will definitely lose. D6, B2, D7, and now you promote to a queen or a rook, doesn't matter because it's mate. Uh, so white will never even, even promote. Uh, so yeah. After this uh, queen to g3 check, Ju Enjun resigned and uh, an excellent victory for young 16-year-old uh, Carissa Yip uh, against the reigning women's world champion Ju Enjun, uh, which also uh, takes Ju Enjun down. She was leading the tournament with Humpy Conero, but now she is uh, down a full point behind, behind Humpy Conero. So yeah, uh, really exciting stuff and a very, very exciting game. Thank you all for, for suggesting it. Uh, I really do hope you enjoyed it. We even do have two photos by the official photographer of the uh, current Cup, the uh, Leonard Otis. Uh, so here it is, one of the one of the photos of the of the in game. You can see uh, both of them really concentrating on the position. And also here's a very uh, artistic photo, if you will, uh, Carissa in front and a blurry Juvenjun in the back, uh, thinking about the position. So there you have it. Uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Luftulak Saglam, Lars Petersen, uh, Prasanna uh, Mangal Verakar, uh, Justin Pedersen, uh, and Benjamin Goland for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, current events that are happening in the world, we are going to, uh, forward with the Paul Morphy saga, and of course, uh, checking up on your other uh, excellent suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.